Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a quick run through on cellular respiration. And just to orient yourself to the geography, uh, take a look at this. This is a diagram showing a cell. Inside the cell is a mitochondria, not drawn to scale. And the mitochondria is broken into two regions by an inner membrane. This is the inner membrane. The central portion inside this inner membrane is known as the matrix. And outside it, between the inner membrane and the outer membrane, is a space called the inner membrane space. This is important to creating a concentration gradient of hydrogen later on. The folds in the membrane are referred to as Christi, and that simply increases the surface area, so there's a lot more activity that can occur here. The, uh, the process of cellular respiration is divided into uh, three steps. The first step is glycolysis. It takes place in the cytoplasm. It's very quick, doesn't produce much ATP. The second step is the Krebs cycle. It takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. It generates a little ATP also, but is more important because of the um, high energy molecules that it produces and sends to the electron transport chain. And then finally, on the membrane, inner membrane, the electron transport chain takes place, and that's where the mother load of, uh, of ATP is formed. The equation that we typically see, C6H12O6, sugar and oxygen yields CO2, H2O, and energy in the form of ATP, can be a little misleading because we eat and all organisms metabolize not just sugar but other compounds as well. Sugar enters into cellular respiration in glycolysis. In fact, glycolysis literally means splitting sugar. Lipids and proteins, however, can also be used uh, for food, for fuel, and they enter um, the process of cellular respiration through the Krebs cycle. Starting with glycolysis, glucose is brought into the cytoplasm of the cell it is split by the addition of four ATPs, which generate four ADPs, and actually, actually cut the glucose in half. That intermediate is acted on by NAD, which strips an electron, picks up a hydrogen, and forms a molecule of NADH. This is a high energy molecule, and it is exported to the electron transport chain that takes place inside the mitochondria. Remember, we're also we're in the cytoplasm right now. The intermediate formed here interacts with four ADPs and forms four ATPs, and these uh, can go to do various items of work in the cell, pumps, cables, growth, cell division, and the like. The net gain, since we used, this is incorrect, this should be, 4 ATP, we're actually using 2 here to split, I'll make that correction now, and we uh, generate 4 here, so our actual net gain is 2 molecules of ATP. Once this reaction takes place and these are sent off to do work in the cell, we're left with uh, some molecules of pyruvate. This vestige of the glucose that we started with is now sent to the Krebs cycle for further uh, rendering and stripping the remaining energy from its bonds and creating more high energy electrons. And that's over here on this board. Pyruvate enters the Krebs cycle, which takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. That can be seen on this diagram right here. It actually the pyruvate comes out of the cytoplasm, goes through some protein ports into the mitochondria, and is conveyed into the matrix. It's a series of chemical reactions, a classic metabolic pathway. Pyruvate reacts with coenzyme A and bonds with a chemical oxaloacetate in the matrix, forming a molecule of acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is a, an instable an unstable uh, intermediate which immediately turns into citric acid which is the first stable intermediate formed in the Krebs cycle also known as the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle is so named because of the formation of this as the initial intermediate. Through a series of reactions citric acid is acted on by NAD uh, that strips electrons, re breaks the bonds, reorganizes the bonds, and creates charged particles, high energy uh, molecules of NADH. 
these molecules are sent off to the ETC, the electron transport chain, to help drive that process. This process of charging up NAD actually occurs three times or more through the entire process of the Krebs cycle. As various intermediaries are formed, other low energy molecules are charged up. For instance, two ADPs are charged up to form two, APs, two ATPs, and these are sent off to perform whatever work the cell needs to have done. And then FAD, a uh, low energy molecule, is charged up into FADH2, further transferring uh, uh, energy from the molecules into uh, its high energy form, causing uh, reconfiguration of these molecules into yet more intermediaries. As these changes take place, CO2 is ripped off in several uh, locations here, and this CO2 is uh, a waste product which is expelled as a gas into the atmosphere. If the molecules of carbon are counted that are given off the CO2, they would equal the pyruvate carbons coming in. So essentially, we start with pyruvate, we combine it with oxaloacetate, it is carried through a metabolic pathway, charges up uh, low energy electrons, gives off CO2, which equals the pyruvate, so we, equal back, we start back with oxaloacetate, our original, um, our original chemical. These high energy molecules are carried to the membrane of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So this is the matrix here, the inner membrane is here, and we're going to expand the view of this membrane right here. These black lines with the various protein transmembrane proteins are shown in the diagram. The matrix where the chemicals were generated is shown below. The intermembrane space is shown above. The high energy electron or uh, high energy molecules NADH and FADH2 interact with the first of three protein pumps and uh, cause hydrogen which is stripped from the NADH and FADH2 to flow into the intermembrane space. The high energy electron is moved first uh, uh, to one protein pump via an electron carrier and then to another proton pump with another mobile electron carrier. As it goes along, it pumps more energy or more uh, hydrogen into the intermembrane space and the electron eventually loses its energy until finally, when it reaches a third uh, protein pump, it is in an extremely low energy state. In order to carry this low energy electron out, oxygen is taken in by the organism. Some other electron carriers are used in other organisms, but typically it's oxygen. It comes in, has a high affinity for electrons, it's highly electronegative, takes the electrons in, draws some hydrogen in, they're attracted to the negative charge of the electron, bonds to form water, which is exhaled along, uh, in, out into the atmosphere. So the organism inhales oxygen, it's used as the final electron acceptor, binds to the electron, pulls in a hydrogen, and then is exhaled as, as water. Through all uh, the pumping processes in these three intermembrane proteins, hydrogen accumulates in high concentration in the intermembrane space. It uh, is anxious to uh, go through chemiosmosis and flow from high concentration back into the matrix where you have a lower concentration, and it finds a port or an opening to do so in the ATP synthase molecule. ATP synthase accepts the hydrogen, it is expelled into the matrix and causes rotation of the ATP synthase molecule, opening up actocytes which expose uh, uh, themselves and bond ADP and inorganic phosphate to create 34 molecules of ATP.